Once the wheels are off the ground and you have the nose pointed skyward, the hard part's over, right? Just raise the gear handle and keep the pointy end going forward is all you got to worry about. Well, just maybe there might be some more stuff you need to take care of. The takeoff and the landing are considered critical phases of flight, but now that you have the aircraft in the air, the real hard work begins. In episode 3, I'm going to cover all the crucial things that I do while I'm climbing up to my operating altitude in the P-51 Mustang by Eagle Dynamics. As in my previous episodes, I'll be sharing with you some checklist items that I go through that might help you remember things and do things in the right order so that you can effectively and efficiently get your airplane up to altitude in the quickest and safest way. This is episode 3 of 6 for the P-51 Mustang, which is part of a larger series in the Air Warfare Group on warbirds in general. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hey everybody, thanks again for following the series. And so I want to share with you some honesty here. I'm not an expert at this, and I'll tell you, for the first year or so flying the Mustang, I was doing everything wrong. I was burning my engine up, running out of fuel, uh, I, I can't, you know, getting lost, uh, getting killed by the bad guy. Uh, and it really takes a lot of time. But if you go about a methodical way of learning your aircraft, uh, learning what each system does, spending some time reading in the books, uh, looking at the manuals, look at the ED manuals, look at the Chuck's guides. I use the Chuck's guide as a quick reference. If I'm looking up something or I need to recall something I haven't done in a long time, I go to the Chuck's guide. If I'm starting with a new airplane, first thing I start with is the Eagle Dynamics manual. And then occasionally I will go and look at the real world manual just for historical purposes to see what that manual offers me. So I really encourage you to sit on the ground with the engine off and the canopy open and maybe a beer in your hand and go through the cockpit and the manual at the same time and learn what each gauge does, look, learn what each switch does and learn how it affects each phase of the flight or each different period of the flight that might affect how you climb or land or take off or do anything in the airplane. Uh, flying on a World War II map in a World War II aircraft is probably my favorite thing to do in DCS World. Uh, and you guys will see that a lot in my videos. Um, but a lot of the stuff that you're doing while you're climbing to altitude, while you're getting up to go join up with the bombers or join up with your fighter group that you're going to do a sweep with or do a, a cap with, is one thing that you're constantly going to be doing during your flight is you're going to have to continue to aviate navigate and communicate and those are the three essential things that you're going to do but that's not the only stuff that you have to do while you're climbing up to altitude now as i'm climbing up to join on the bombers uh, a lot of times i will use my checklist and i'll just kind of do a sweep around the cockpit that i've trained myself to go in an order in a fashion and i know what areas are pretty critical uh, some of the things that are critical is the engine temperature. So I'll look at my radiators and I'll look at, cause I'm climbing, I've got some drag out there with a couple of fuel tanks. Uh, if the temperature, if it's a warm day and I haven't gotten up to altitude where it's a lot cooler, I'll, I'll make sure I'm keeping an eye on that temperature gauge and on my oil pressure, uh, my fuel pressure, uh, and I'll make sure that I'm not getting too hot. So I'll adjust the radiators as I need to. I'll also dial in RPM and manifold pressure. Once you get off the ground and you've got the gear handle up, I think you're supposed to do about 46 inches of manifold pressure at 27 RPMs for your climb. And I have been doing that. Both of those are outside of the green arcs, but they seem to do just fine as long as you monitor your temperatures, use your radiators as needed. Uh, and in any case, uh, if you start to overheat and you're, you're not able to cool it with the radiator duals, doors full open, then go ahead and back off that throttle, lower the nose, lower your climb rate, and that'll bring some cooling into the engine too. I'll uh, quickly, right after the takeoff, I'm adjusting my rudder tr uh, trim and also I'm adjusting my pitch trim to hold the climb so I'm not working, you know, getting my arm all, you know, worked out with the stick. 
I switch to the fuselage tank as soon as I'm off the ground. Uh, that way I'm starting to use that back tank that's behind the pilot. Uh, the aircraft is a little tail heavy, and if I do get into a uh, aerial combat situation, I'll want to make sure that tank is empty first. Even before I start draining the wing tanks, I'll empty the fuselage tank. Constantly throughout the, uh, the flight, I'm cross-checking my instruments, making sure I'm on the right frequency, checking my position and formation, uh, looking out for the bandit. Uh, I'm doing all kinds of stuff, and this is something I'm doing along with maintaining position in the formation, watching out what's right around me, and making sure I'm going in the right direction. Navigation is crucial, as I mentioned, and I'm going to monitor the radios. Um, you know, at different phases in the flight, I'm going to make sure that I'm on the right frequency, uh, and I'm going to make sure that I'm listening or have been talking to people that I'm supposed to talk to. Once we get above a certain altitude, around 10,000 feet, I like to I like to use 10,000 as a well-rounded number. Uh, above 10,000 feet, I'll make sure that my oxygen blinker is flowing, my my knob is on, and I have oxygen in the cockpit or in my mask. The pedo heat, as needed, I have had the P-51 in DCS World turn my airspeed indicator into an altimeter from the pedo heat plugged up. And, and lo and behold, as soon as I hit the pedo heat, a few minutes later, it started to work in. Carb heat, I really have had a problem with that in the P-51 at altitude, but if you do notice that your engine RPM starts to sputter uh, and you start to have the effects of, of a, car a carb icing, then you'll need to use that carb heat switch over on the side by the flap handle. And then the gun heat, make sure you have the gun heat on too so it doesn't uh, clog, up, clog up the ports with ice. And as I said, along with my cross check, I'm going to be monitoring my fuel, but I'm also going to be starting to use my fuel in a systematic way. After the fuselage tank is empty, I'm going to start on each wing tank, and I may use half of the left, and then I'll switch over and use the, all of the right. And once all of the right's gone, I'll switch back over to the left, use all the left. I'll hold on to those tanks. If they're the metal reusable tanks, like these are on the airplane right here, if I don't use them in combat, if I don't get in combat and have to engage with the enemy, I'll just keep those tanks on for the whole flight and fly back home with them because then I can use those and refuel them, uh, refill them later. The craft paper were the tanks that were meant to be used within 18 hours of filling them up. They, the fuel, they were paper tanks with a resin, and they were designed so that you can fill them up with gas, and they would last for about 18 hours uh, so that you could basically, they were one-way tanks. So you take off, and once you have those, you you're they're empty. You just jettison them, just get rid of them. Now, all this that I've been doing has also been in conjunction with me doing a good visual scan, checking around me, checking my six, checking my wingman six, checking my flight lead six, uh, watching out to make sure I'm not going to bump into anybody, looking for where I'm going to join up with the bombers. And again, a lot of this just comes natural with time. I wasn't doing it right when I first started. And number one thing I like to say is don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's how you learn. If you make a mistake in a mission or in a flight, learn from it, move on, and next time you'll be smarter for it. Now let's go into the aircraft and see all this stuff in action. Okay, here we are off Manston on the channel map and we are gonna go join up with some bombers today. So I'm gonna take you through some of the things that I do right after I take off. Let's get back in the cockpit. So the first thing I did after I took off is I went ahead and uh, dialed my trim back over to just a couple degrees right uh, for the cruise phase, and I'll verify that with my ball, make sure my ball's centered in the turn coordinator. Uh, next thing I'll do is I'll come back on my throttle, on the power, I'll bring the RPMs down so about 2700, 2750, and then I'll take my manifold pressure and bring it back to that 46-ish inches. And I've got it about 48 right now, actually about 47. And I found that worked pretty good for me. You can see my temperature gauge. I'm monitoring my temperature right now on the uh, overall temp right now is in the green. Uh, however, the the temperature of the uh, of the oil is just right now it's a little bit high so I'm gonna keep the cooler doors open let's see I just put them in automatic mode let's see what happens see if it brings it down and if I need to I'll open those up but as I climb altitude uh, climb in altitude it should be a little bit better so with that temperature there I went ahead and lowered my nose 
and watch I may there you go now I'm opening up both cooler doors again to get some cooling so I can increase my climb so I lowered my nose a little bit I'm still on the frequency I'm still watching out for my wingman or my flight lead looking around make sure I'm not gonna bump anybody right now we're over home base and there's nobody raiding on us so we're gonna go ahead and follow our navigation plan now you can see over there in that main gauge below the RPM right next to the oxygen regulator switch right there's the uh, the cooling so it's coming down into the green arc pretty well so I'm gonna keep the doors open as we climb right now we're climbing at about 170 looking for the bombers where are those guys they should be coming up here soon we're gonna farm on a group of B-17s today going outside not much sexiness to see here it's pretty cool but here I am I got my lights on still because we're still in a friendly territory I still want my wingmen if I'm flying to be able to catch up with me uh, want them to be able to see me easier easier to catch up and then we'll turn off the lights when we get over the channel okay we're on our final heading to RV deal where we're gonna meet up with the bombers and they should be somewhere up and over there there they are yep we're right in line with them about three or four thousand feet below them and we're climbing up so the bombers are doing about 220 in formation we're gonna go up and join them and so we're watching we're just managing our heat making sure that we're gonna stay in our assigned travel area until we rendezvous with them and we're gonna maintain 140 right about there to deal and those bombers are getting closer check out and see where the flight lead is or we'll look back and check position on our wingman make sure we're on the right frequency right now we've got the pedo heat and the gun heat on all ready for the and get ready for going over 10,000 cooler doors are still open trim is set pretty much flying at fingertip pressure and you can see the ball is centered there My range on the K-14 site. I'll set that up. That was my wingman calling in. He has visual. Called me Skipper. That's my guy replying back to him. White leader out. And then I am going to pick up my speed. We're now at 200. We're going to pick it up to 220. We'll probably go a little faster to, to catch up with the bombers and get over top of them. And at some point, I'm going to set my gun range to a thousand yards, and I'll set the wingspan on the K-14 site to 40 feet. And you'll see that pop on here in a second. This is a replay track I'm using right now, so I'm just got my head tracker in the cockpit. Almost to the shoreline. down there is the town of Dover, the port of Dover. Manston is off right there in the corner, top corner of the frame. All right, the gun is set. Let's bring the wingspan over. There we go. Take it back down to right at about 40. There we go. That's close enough. Tiffinel, Abel. We have tally. Boy, you guys are sight for sore eyes. Didn't want to hit the coast without an escort. Abel out. If you guys are interested in this mission, we have a four-player and an eight-player version of this mission. I think the four-player Mustang version is loaded onto our air warfare group. I'll put a link in the description where you can download this mission if you want to play it with like up to four buddies in P-51s and go on this escort. I'll give you a hint. There is there is bombers involved and there is enemy fighters involved too. So you're escorting a group of B-17s that you can see on the horizon there. They're going to be dropping bombs on a, on a B-1 rocket site. A buzz bomb. All right, at one point we'll switch our frequencies turn our lights out. Our lights are out now. 
I'm going to head and turn both of those down and off in the middle position. You'll see down there where those ro roll of switches. I'll put my cursor here. I don't think it shows up on the recording, but I'm putting it down here. You'll see right here where the watch this move. Well, it doesn't move because I'm watching the replay. Ha <laughs> ha. So right now we have fenced in over the over the channel. We've got our lights off so that we're sanitized a little bit. No need in giving the enemy any other advantage. Now that our cooling, we're almost to altitude and our cooling is well managed, we went ahead and went automatic on the radiators, on the cooler doors, and we're simply going to form up with the bombers. That pretty much concludes episode three, guys. Be sure to leave us a comment on tips you found on climbing in the Mustang or any other Warbird. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, some of the, the mistakes you were making and how you learned from them. And that's, again, I can't say it enough, don't be afraid to make any mistakes. We're all going to do it. You'll learn from it and you'll get better. So now we're just going to go over here and climb up and weave across the top of the bombers and stay close to them in case the enemy comes up. This is Juice. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.